Uh, hello, I'm Charlie Barden and I'm the director of Outcome. Um, we had real trouble filming this scene because it's hard to film someone missing a bus without actually standing there and waiting for a bus. So it was in the editing that we had to sort of make it look like there was a bus actually there when she was running past. So that took quite some time to do and quite a few shots. This sequence is the first time that she's approached by Paige. a friend from work. Hiya. Hi, how's it going? All right, thanks. What about you? Not too bad. Listen, do you need a lift anywhere? The idea of the film is that she's she makes a choice. She can choose between two different options. One is to get in the car, which ends up with her ultimately dying. The second choice she can make is to not get in the car, but her destiny leads her to the same conclusion. And she gets hit by the car anyway, meaning that her destiny is predetermined and can't be changed. What we're looking at here is a camera in the back of the car. I chose to shoot it from a passenger's point of view. Uh, this puts the audience inside the car and uh, seeing the situation but not being able to intervene. This section here with the dialogue is a classic shot, reverse shot scenario. No! For this section I thought it would be nice to film it outside the car and then go back in through the window and then back out again. This saved having to do multiple shots from different angles but it gave the same effect. Okay, so here we are at the second scenario. This is where she decides to not get in the car and the villain drives away. Uh, again, I chose to shoot this shot and shot reverse, but we later found that the production audio was uh, very windy. So the actors came back and we re-recorded the voices and synced it up with the footage. Thank you anyway, boy. You sure? No, I'm getting a lift, thanks anyway. Okay then. We wanted this section to be really slow because um, we felt that the viewer was sort of anticipating what was going to happen, but we sort of was holding them back from the the final scene, sort of. Hello? Hi. Yeah, you're right. Good. Um, I'm just walking to the park now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I shouldn't be too long. I'll be at yours soon. Because I didn't really have a lot of time to play with the dialogue, yeah. I used like close-up shots uh, to tell the story through emotional responses. Some examples yeah, which are seen in some French New Wave, okay. which I looked at a couple of years ago. No, it's alright. No, well, I'll just cross over the hill because it'll be quicker. Because otherwise it'll take me 15 minutes. It'll only take me about five going over the hill. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> At this point, we cut back to the original scenario just to remind the audience as the, as the girl sees it herself from the top of the hill. We thought it would be good to use the same shot as we did before so it was clearer to see that it was exactly the same scenario. We really, really wanted to see the actress get hit by the car. The second option would have been to just hear the sound and then cut away to her dead body but I really didn't want to do that. So instead, we filmed that shot about four times, each with the different elements, so one with the actress, one with the car, and one with the actress falling on a chair. And then using Photoshop, we blended all of these elements together, and we added a horrific sound effect, which I think makes the shot work in the end. So overall, I think it's quite a simple story, but the camera work and the editing make it flow quite coherently. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the film.